I'm Dr. Stream, a board certified family medicine and sports medicine doctor with a background in exercise physiology and integrative medicine. So let's say if you're exercising regularly and you've been doing like a biking or jogging or swimming, basically kind of more like a moderate intensive exercise. Or let's say if you're going to be starting to exercise as a complete new beginner and you've been wondering whether you should incorporate high intensity interval training or not, then this video is just for you. So in this video, we're going to dwell into what high intensity interval training is, explore the benefits of high intensity interval training, and discuss whether it is superior to continuous aerobic exercises like brisk walking, jogging, or biking that you currently engage in. Additionally, if you're interested in starting to incorporate high intensity interval training, I'll talk about how to get started safely. So without further ado, let's get started. So what is high intensity interval training? It is basically a form of cardiovascular exercise strategy that combines short bursts of intense exercise with periods of lower intensity of rest. The idea basically is to push yourself to near maximum effort during the high intensity burst, followed by a recovery period to catch your breath and prepare for the next burst. So before we talk further about high intensity interval training, let's discuss briefly about exercise intensity. So when we say exercise intensity, it basically means that how challenging the exercise is. The intensity can be classified as low, moderate, and vigorous. So one can use the heart rate max method to classify the exercise intensity, or for more precise metrics, one can use the heart rate reserve method. I'm going to link a video at the end of this video to find out what's your target heart rate for low, moderate, and vigorous intensity exercise using the heart rate reserve method. Nowadays, most smartwatches, they have heart rate measuring capabilities, making it easier to monitor your exercise intensity. One can also use the talk test or perceived exertion to gauge whether one is exercising at a low, moderate, or vigorous intensity. And all these uh, things I've covered in the video that I'm going to link at the end of this video. So I'm currently 35 years old. According to the heart rate reserve method, here's my target heart rate for low, moderate, and vigorous intensities. For low intensity, it's around 93 to 106 beats per minute. For moderate intensity, it's around 106 to 131 beats per minute. For vigorous intensity, 131 to 170 beats per minute. So using the heart rate reserve method, you can also find your target heart rate for your low, moderate, and vigorous intensity. So when we discuss high intensity interval training, the workload during the high intensity interval burst is going to be somewhere between 85 to 90% of heart rate reserve, or sometimes even more than that. So for me, approximately is going to be around 160 to 180 beats per minute, which is basically the target heart rate that I would aim for during the high intensity interval burst, followed by active recovery. The high intensity interval burst could be somewhere between 30 seconds all the way up to 4 minutes depending on the type of workout that you wish to do. So what are the cardiovascular benefits of high intensity interval training? So during high intensity exercise, your heart is working vigorously to supply the muscles with oxygen rich blood to meet the elevated demands of the exercise. In response to this intense stress, the heart undergoes adaptations that are going to be very beneficial. So one of the most important adaptation is the increase in stroke volume, basically the amount of blood that is ejected in one heartbeat. So as you do high intensity interval training, the heart is going to get stronger and thereby that the, the amount of blood that is ejected, eject, ejected in one heartbeat is going to be higher. Basically the heart is becoming more efficient. High intensity training also improves the energy house of the cell, which is basically the mitochondria. So when the mitochondrial capacity is improved, this means that it's going to extract more oxygen, thereby you, one's fitness is going to improve as well. In addition to that, it also improves the endothelium, which is basically the lining of the blood vessels, basically promoting improved vascular health and thereby decreasing the risk for heart disease and stroke. It also enhances the body's metabolic rate, it aids in glucose metabolism and it also increases fat burning at rest. So all of these adaptations is going to improve a key marker called as the VO2 max, which is basically a gold standard measurement for one's fitness. And when you improve your fitness, it means that there is going to be more time spent on this planet. Basically, it improves your longevity and that too with an improved quality of life. Now, the question is, are the benefits of high intensity interval training superior to those of the exercise that you might currently be doing, such as moderate to light vigorous exercise like jogging, biking or swimming? For example, let's say I like to run on the treadmill for 30 minutes, five days a week. And my heart rate is usually around 130 to 150 beats per minute during the run. So which is basically somewhere between moderate to vigorous intensity. Now, by incorporating high intensity interval training, could I further improve my heart fitness? In 1996, a groundbreaking study introduced the fitness phenomenon known as the Tabata training. So basically, the researchers had two groups. So one group were doing the moderate intensity or moderate to vigorous int intensity continuous aerobic exercise. So think about more like jogging 
for 60 minutes and they were doing five days per week. And the other group, they were doing this all out exhaustion effort. So they, they, they were doing, uh, in that particular study, they talked about 170% VO2 max. The easy way to understand is that this is an all out effort. And they were doing this 20 second sprints followed by 10 second uh, recovery. And they're doing for seven to eight sets. And they were doing this for five days per week. So you can look like you know, one, one group is doing 60 minutes, uh, uh, five days a week. Whereas this group is doing somewhere between like four to five minutes of training. And probably they, they've not included their warm up. So which might be another like 10 minutes of warm up, warm up or so. So maybe let's say it's around like 14 minutes of this particular exercise. At the end of the study, they found that both group improved fitness and their fitness improvements were similar in both groups. But the, the, the key highlight is that the people who were doing this all out effort, they were able to improve the fitness that is similar to the moderate intensity or moderate to vigorous intensity continuous aerobic exercise. So they were able to uh, improve the fitness similar except with a fraction of time. Even though uh, this particular study, uh, they did this all out effort, I'm not going to recommend to my patients to do an all out effort because it can significantly increase the risk of injuries by doing all out exhaustion effort. But it kind of like start, it kind of started to become popular and various type of high intensity inter interval training protocols have come up after this Tabata training uh, study was introduced. But are there studies to demonstrate that high intensity interval training is significantly more beneficial than continuous moderate to vigorous intensity exercise like jogging or walking or swimming or biking? So this was a notable study published in 2007. And the researchers, they compared four different exercise intensities by randomly assigning 40 healthy, non-smoking, moderately trained male participants, which is key here, into one of four groups. So the group one is the long, slow distance running where they undertook a continuous run at 70% heart rate max. So you're looking somewhere between moderate to vigorous intensity for 45 minutes. And then you have the second group, which is a lacto lactate threshold running group. And they engage in a continuous run as well for 24 minutes. And here uh, you're looking at a vigorous intensity exercise, somewhere, somewhere around like 85% heart rate max. And then you have the third group, which is the 15-15 interval running where they did 47 repetitions of 15 second intervals at 90 to 95% heart rate max with a 15 second active resting period. And this rest period is around like um, jogging intensity. And then you have the group four, which is the four times four minute interval running where they do four minutes of 90 to 95% heart rate max followed by three minute active, rest, active resting period. And they were doing this cycle for four times. So all the subjects underwent three training sessions per week for eight weeks. The study showed that both the 15-15 interval and the four times four minute interval running group, they experienced improvements in VO2 max, which is the gold standard measurement for fitness, with percentage increase of 5.5% and 7.2% respectively. The stroke volume also increased significantly by approximately 10% after interval training. So the key highlight in the study is that these subjects were moderately trained the long distance running as well as the lactate threshold running, they did not improve their fitness. And there's a chance that these, since these people are moderately trained, they needed, uh, they needed to uh, uh, provide extra stress through high interval training to see a fitness improvement. In 2015, a systematic review pulled all relevant studies to directly compare moderate and high intensity interval training. So the findings in this study show that basically both the continuous moderate intensity aerobic exercise as well as the high intensity interval training, they both improved one's fitness, which is good. When you when you directly compare the, the uh, moderate intensity aerobic exercise and the high intensity interval training, the studies show that the high intensity interval training may, may offer a slight advantage when compared to the moderate intensity exercise, although the improvement might be just minor. So with that said, let's discuss some key advantages of high intensity interval training. So it leads to an improvement in fitness in just half the time. This is key. This method also provides an extra dopamine boost and is generally more enjoyable compared to long distance running, at least for most people. However, there are certain risks that is associated with high intensity interval training, especially in persons who are not accustomed to exercise. When you're engaging in 85 to 90 percent or 95 percent heart rate result, that is a significantly high intensity. 
that can be very stressful on the joints and tissues, which can lead to overuse injuries. I've seen acute muscle strains. I've seen acute muscle injuries like rhabdomyolysis, which can cause uh, a threat to the organs as well. Obviously, we can mitigate these risks by selecting the appropriate exercises for the individual, but the possibility of injury still exists. So typically, I advise my patients to approach high intensity interval training with caution. So for example, one can probably start with 80% of heart rate reserve and gradually build up their intensity to 85%, 90%, 90% and 95% if needed. Or if, if someone is completely new to exercising, I usually recommend them to build a foundation with a moderate intensity continuous aerobic exercise before they start incorporating high intensity interval training. If someone has a history of heart disease or uncontrolled hypertension or diabetes, I recommend discussing it with your doctor before beginning high intensity interval training. If you have any risk factors, it's always better to start exercise slowly, perhaps with continuous endurance type exercises like brisk walking, jogging or biking for 30 minutes daily before moving on to high intensity interval training workouts. So how to get started with high intensity interval training? So one can opt to do only high intensity interval training. So one can do maybe three days per week of high intensity interval training, or one can do a combination of both continuous moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic exercise and then you can throw in one or two sessions of high intense interval training during the week. So let me share my personal cardio routine during the week. So I like to engage in lactate threshold training, which involves 15 minutes of continuous vigorous intensity cardio, basically running on the treadmill at 7.3 miles per hour for three days a week. Additionally, I do one day of four times three high intensity interval training in the treadmill, but I do four minutes of high intensity with my heart rate around like 170 to 180 beats per minute, followed by three minutes of active recovery and repeated three to four times. In addition, I spend two days playing tennis or basketball for an hour or so, both of which range from moderate to vigorous intensity. On some weeks, I also include 30 minutes of moderate intensity biking. I like to train across all these exercise pathways to keep my routine diverse and effective. So let's say you decide to do the high intensity interval training routine and now you're trying to decide how much time do you have to spend in the high intensity interval burst. For example, I do the four times four interval training protocol, but I spend four minutes on the high intensity burst, which is around like 85 to 95% heart rate reserve. And that's, and if I, if I repeat that for four times, that's almost like 16 minutes of workload. Currently, I'm only doing three times because I'm recovering from an injury, but my goal is to do four times. So basically 16 minutes in the next three to four weeks or four to six weeks or so. So if you're trying to determine, determine whether you want to do, maybe start with four minute of high intensity interval burst or, or like a, a total workload or a 16 minute total workload, th that is dependent on your initial fitness level. So in this study, there were 26 inactive but otherwise healthy overweight men and they were randomized into two groups. So one did four minutes of running at high intensity and the other group did four times of four minutes high intensity. After the training period, the improvement in fitness was similar in both groups. So this study suggests that a single bout of aerobic interval training performed three times per week may be a time efficient strategy to improve the fitness and reduce blood pressure and fasting glucose levels in inactive but otherwise healthy middle-aged individuals. So if your baseline fitness is low, you can just start with four minutes of workload and gradually progress. I consider myself as a moderately trained individual, which is why I try to do at least uh, 12 to 16 minutes of uh, workload of the high intensity level to elicit an improvement in fitness. So before you do high intensity interval training workouts, it's essential to start with a proper warm up to prepare your body and reduce the risk for injury. Aim for five to 10 minutes of light cardio, such as jogging, cycling, or jumping jacks, followed by dynamic stretching that can mimic the movements that you'll be performing in your workout. So here are some sample hit workouts that you can consider adding. So the number one is the four times four Norwegian protocol, where you do a high intensity workload for four minutes, followed by three minute recovery, and you repeat the cycle three to four times. The next option would be alternating between running for one minute and one minute of recovery, and you repeat this process five to 10 times. The third option would be doing a sprint interval where you sprint for 15 seconds and then you rest for 15 seconds and you repeat the cycle six to 10 times. Again, since you're focusing on short bursts of high speed, you want to make sure that your body is prepared because there is high risk for injury here. The fourth option would be doing a high intensity biking where you go all out on the bike for 30 seconds followed by one minute recovery and you repeat this interval eight to 10 times. And since again, you're going all out, there's a high risk for injury here. And finally, you have the functional training circuit where you can execute a sequence of bodyweight exercises like 20 seconds of squats, 
and then you take a 10 second rest, then you can do 20 seconds of burpees, then you can take a 10 second rest, then you can do 20 seconds of jumping jacks, then you can take a 10 second rest, and then you can do 20 seconds of push-ups followed by 10 second rest, and you take a one minute rest, and then you repeat this cycle four to six times for full body conditioning, high intensity interval training. However, after listening to this video, if you're someone who does not want to engage in high intensity interval training, because you might be thinking that it might be riskier and then the improvements might be minor, then it's totally okay skipping it. As you can see for general fitness, one can see a big improvement in fitness just by incorporating moderate to vigorous intensity continuous aerobic exercise. But it's important to make sure that you hit the, uh, the, uh, the recommended amounts of these type of exercise. So the recommended amount is basically 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity exercise or 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous intensity exercise or a combination of both to see a big improvement in your fitness. Ultimately, it's crucial that you enjoy and maintain your exercise regimen since sustaining your activity is far more important than whether you're going to include high intensity interval training or not. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to know more about the exercise intensity, then I highly recommend to check out this video. If you want to know how calories are burned during exercise, then I recommend checking out this video here. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.